Hello guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the pulse. Okay, the waveform of the pulse. See, in your carotids. Okay, carotids are the direct branches of the iota. Okay, I'm talking about the major blood vessel. In major blood vessels, how the pulse is going to be. See, so during systole, you tell me what happens. During systole, during the rapid ejection phase, the pressure is going to rise. Am I right or not? So, the pressure is going to rise from 80 to 120, you know. So, during rapid ejection phase, the pressure rises in your heart. So, more blood will come into your iota. As more blood is going to come into your iota, see, look, the pulse pressure, okay, the pressure, the pressure is also increasing. Okay, during systole, your blood pressure increases. See, here I am talking about the pressure. Okay, here I am talking about the time on x-axis. So, during systole, what happens? Pressure increases. Okay, and tell me what happens in the slow ejection phase. In the slow ejection phase, the pressure decreases. Less amount of stroke volume is going to your iota. Okay, so as the pressure is decreasing, as the pressure is decreasing, see here also, decreases pressure decreases in the iota pressure is decreasing in the left ventricle so automatically pressure is also decreasing in your iota or carotids let's say okay so pressure initially increases during rapid ejection phase later pressure decreases during slow ejection phase so i can say something like this so here initially pressure increasing later decreasing little bit decreasing so rapid ejection phase slow ejection phase you know during the peak of rapid ejection phase. During rapid ejection phase, your pressure is going to be somewhere around 120 systolic blood pressure. So, your systolic blood pressure is 120. So, I can say something like this. During your systole, which phase of systole? That too mainly, rapid ejection phase. The blood pressure is noted 120. Later, after the rapid ejection phase, what happens? The pressure decreases in your blood vessels. Or I should say, the pressure decreases in your left ventricle. So, pressure is also decreasing in your iota. Pressure is decreasing in your carotids. Okay, so when the pressure is decreasing in your left ventricle, look, when the pressure is decreasing in your left ventricle, so immediately which valve will close? Iotic valve closes. So this is the exact point, okay, this is the exact time you can say the aortic valve is closed. So at this point, when the ventricular pressure is decreasing, look, when the ventricular pressure is decreasing, also the aortic pressures are also decreasing. So here, this is the exact point. The aortic valve will close. After the closure of aortic valve, see aortic valve is closed. What will the aorta do now? Aortic valve is closed. Now the aorta will try to squeeze. Aorta will try to squeeze and it want to push the blood forward into the arteries. So now aorta it is squeezing. When the aorta is squeezing, blood will be forwarded. The blood is going to be pushed into the arteries and also some blood is also again pushed back towards the heart, it is pushed back towards the aortic wall, okay. So, because of the elastic recoiling of the arteries, because of this arterial resistance, what happens? There is a little elevation in pressure, okay. There is a little elevation pressure. So, the blood have gone into the iota. Now, this iota is going to recoil. The iota is squeezing back, recoiling back. So, some blood will also try to come back towards the left ventricle and the blood is also going towards the arteries. So, because of this recoiling back of the iota, elastic recoil, there is a little rise in pressure. Okay. So, again later what happens? Gradually with time during diastole pressure decreases. So, at the end of the day, what I am trying to put into your mind, sir, during systole, your pressure increases. During diastole, your pressure decreases. During rapid ejection phase, pressure increasing. And during slow ejection phase, pressure decreases. And during diastole, what happens? After the closure of aortic valve, once the aortic valve is closed, now diastole starts. Now, during the diastole, what happened to your blood pressure? Decreases in a simple way. I can say something like this, guys. So, initially, pressure increases later decreases. Pressure increases, later decreases. So, this is how your pulse waveform is going to be. If I am just showing in the waveform, this is how the waveform is going to be in your carotids. So, pressure increases during systole, decreases during diastole. So, what is this exact point? Iotic wall closed. So, this notch is called as, so this notch is called as dichrotic 
notch. This notch is called as dichrotic notch. Tell me what exactly happens during dichrotic notch? During dichrotic notch, exactly your aortic valve is going to, your aortic valve closes during dichrotic notch. So, if someone asks you, during this dichrotic notch, which heart sound is heard? Which heart sound is heard during this dichrotic notch? S2 heart sound because you know the closure of aortic valve, the closure of aortic valve, semilunar valves is going to cause the S2 heart sound. So, this is how your normal pulse waveform is going to be. After learning this normal thing, this is normal physiology. You have to know certain abnormal pulses also. Okay, abnormal pulses. There are certain diseases in which the pulse waveforms are going to change. Okay, there are certain diseases in which you are going to have high fast rising pulse and fast falling pulse. There are diseases in which you, you, you are going to see slow rising pulses. There are diseases in which you will see weak pulses. There are diseases in which you will see the pulse changes with the inspiration and expiration. So, I am telling you just names. I am not going to the details because this is not, uh, anyway, this is not the pathology class. So, here I will be telling you the names of abnormal pulses seen in which conditions and I will try to show the waveforms also. Okay. So, look at this. Here is the normal pulse. The first one is the normal pulse. I have told you. See, normal pulse pressure increases and decreases during diastole. Increases and decreases during diastole. So, what is that notch that will form here? Dichrotic notch. This is something normal. You know it. Now, let us look. So, there is something called as a dichrotic pulse. What does it mean by dichrotic pulse? See, here you are having two peaks. Two peaks are coming. Dichrotic pulse. Whenever you see the word dichrotic D for D, dichrotic pulse seen in dilated cardiomyopathy. The person who is having a dilated cardiomyopathy is going to have dichrotic pulses. Okay, dichrotic pulses. Next, bounding pulse. What is this bounding pulse, sir? Fast rising, fast falling pulse. Bounding pulses are seen in patients with aortic regurgitation. Okay, aortic regurgitation. Next, pulses bisferens. These are all the abnormal pulses. Pulses bisferens. Pulses bisferens means during systole you are having two peaks. Okay, during systole there are two systolic peaks and one diastole. There are two systolic peaks. So, this is called as a pulses bisferens. Also seen with aortic regurgitation. Also seen in aortic regurgitation. Possible. Next, pulses alternance. Pulses alternance. Here, this is a weak pulse. Here is a strong pulse. Weak pulse, strong pulse. The duration between these two, the intervals is regular. Okay, this is called as something called as a pulses alternance. Pulses alternance is seen with the heart failure, seen in the conditions of heart failure. Next, now let us see the pulses paradoxes, guys. What exactly is pulses paradoxes? See, in pulses paradoxes, see here, weak pulse is there. See, when during inspiration, according to inspiration and expiration, with the inspiration and expiration, your pulse is decreasing. So, I can say during inspiration, your pulse will disappear, less pulse, and during expiration, normal pulse. With inspiration, pulse is disappearing. So, this is something called as a pulses, paradoxes. It is seen in many conditions, many conditions. At least I want you to know a cardiac tamponade. Okay, cardiac tamponade, also constrictive pericarditis. Constrictive pericarditis, cardiac tamponade is a condition where the person is going to have pulses, paradoxes with inspiration. With inspiration, less pulse, expiration, big pulse. Okay, next pulses parvus et tardus. Okay, pulses parvus et tardus. And you can say pulses tardus et parvus, both the same thing. Also called as anacrotic pulse. Anacrotic pulse means slow rising pulse. Here, see the pulse is rising slowly, but usually the pulse is fast. Okay, this is how the pulse should rise during systole. The pressure should rise. In this condition, the pulse is rising slowly. So, these are called as a weak pulses, slow rising pulses. Okay, in which condition it will be seen? In the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, that is aortic stenosis. A person with aortic stenosis is going to have pulses parvus et tardus, also called as anacrotic pulse. Don't confuse. Anacrotic pulse, aortic stenosis. Dichrotic pulse, DCM. D for D. Dichrotic pulse seen in dilated cardiomyopathy. Anacrotic pulse seen in aortic stenosis. A for A. 
and the last pulse the water hammer pulse okay water hammer pulse also called as the corrigans pulse so such kind of a corrigans pulse also seen in aortic regurgitation so the person who is suffering with the aortic regurgitation it's, it's nothing but a bounding pulse okay so the person uh, suffering with aortic regurgitation is going to have corrigans pulse water hammer pulse pulses bisferens bounding pulse okay there are different types of abnormal pulses that can be seen in the aortic regurgitation so first i have explained you what is the normal pulse wave form during systole pressure increases later decreases with the dichrotic notch during during dichrotic notch aortic valve closes creating which heart sound s2 heart sound so dichrotic notch is seen during s2 heart sound or during the closure of aortic valve and in exams they will ask you this a dichrotic notch okay this a dichrotic notch is due to arterial resistance after the closing of the aortic valve the aorta will squeeze and the blood will be try to push forward so that's aortic recoiling or aortic resistance is going to cause that dichrotic notch okay so normal pulses and abnormal pulses are completed hope the video is helpful thank you